All right, so this is um, this is a so-called blowtorch stove or butane burner stove. The idea here is that we got this um, basically non-renewable fossil fuel uh, mix of propane and butane. And this one is labeled as a four season mix, which means that it will work and keep its pressure uh, down in lower temperature ranges as well. Um, so you can set this up on snow, for example, and even with the snow cooling the fuel, it'll still maintain enough pressure to get some fuel out through the nozzle and through your stove and thawing your snow and melting it and boiling it to make it safe. Um, these are technically recyclable, but most folks don't recycle them. So um, this is an awesome backup option to always have with you backpacking. But in terms of our future generations, like your grandkids someday, you know, if you want to have families, um, this is going to be a, a problem for them. This kind of disposable culture approach to camping. So that's why we talk about these. We always want to have, you know, a, a durable, reliable uh, backup option, but also pick up the skills to make a totally sustainable, leave no trace, very safe, also very effective and quick, uh, regular like campfire and cook fire. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, you would just pull it out of its little storage case. And if it's super cold out, you can warm this up against your body in a pocket uh, under your jacket, for example, and then pull it out and go ahead and screw the pocket rocket onto, or the dragonfly, excuse me, onto this. This is a standard threaded um, uh, valve and all the different brands still use that same threading. So these are pretty inter interchangeable. Okay. So, go for it. Yeah, they're... how do you do it? I think you turn this over and Oh, this one? Yep. Okay. There you go. Thread it straight down and on. And here it hiss for just a moment. Keep on going past that. It is flat. Careful, it might be going across be... thread of there. Yeah. Make sure it's straight up and down. Is it supposed to be down like that? It'll eventually be up, but yeah. You can okay. I thought it open it now or later. Either way. There you go, righty tidy on. Yeah. Screw it all the way down until it's tight. Okay. Okay, easy enough. And then the next move is to kind of butterfly open those three pop holders. All the way out. And they each rotate on two axes in the case of the dragonfly. So, like that, and then out. Good. Okay, and all that's left is to flip down the valve handle mm -hmm. and righty tighty to close it off, just mm -hmm. like with threading it on. Uh, lefty loosey to open the throttle, and you'll hear the hiss. So, you don't need a flame to start this, you just need a spark source. So, even a lighter that is wet and out of fuel will still work. So, just always have a habit of never throwing away your letters ever um, and just kind of stockpile them. so this is a thumb forward safety pull the trigger and it goes and you'll see it it's super windy so it's just gonna blow out immediately but um, it creates the spark at the distal end so you just hold that over it spark it after it turns open so you'll hear a hiss of fuel Easy. All right, so this is a very, it's a little bit noisy, so I'll turn that off. Um, this is a very sort of tight, concentrated flame. It's like a blowtorch going straight up. Uh, whereas with the older sort of whisper light camp stoves, um, it spreads all the flames sideways and then up with this inner baffle and then the outer baffle. So the entire bottom of the pot's gonna get heated and kind of up the sides too when it's wide open burning. Um, and so to evenly cook everything with this, they are using less metal, so it's a lot lighter. Uh, there are fewer parts, it's less complex, it's cheaper to make, more durable. But you're gonna get that real hot spot right in the middle of the bottom of your pot. And all the stuff right there is gonna be like black, hard, carbon, everything else is gonna be raw and undercooked. So if you're just boiling water, doesn't matter. 
but once you throw the food in there and if you're still like heating stuff up um, you just want to be aware of that little hot spot right there okay and um, the sort of fancier higher tech version of this uh, called a jet boil has baffles between this and the bottom of the pot which is also insulated which spreads out that heat and boils water super fast um, but it can actually overcook food super quickly if you're not aware of that dynamic. So a lot of backpacking meals, because this is a blowtorch, because we're not carrying a ton of fuel, it'll be the kind of thing where you boil water and you throw the stuff in and you just let it sit. You're not actually even cooking the food over heat because it's pre-cooked or it's vegetarian and you don't need to sterilize it or whatever. Um, so that's kind of a subtle thing, but uh, if you hate scrubbing pots and pans in the backcountry, like I hate doing dishes, but it's a necessary evil. Um, this kind of stove will make you do dishes a little bit more if you are still cooking while the food is on there instead of just boiling water. Make sense? All right, why don't you try it? Start to finish, righty tighty. I'll uh, disassemble it and go for it. And you can practice this as many times as you guys want. There you go. Good luck. This is not a test, so, you know. You got it, Ellie. You do you. Super easy. You got it. Is it all the way tight, or is it just gonna... All the way tight. Just thumb tight. Yeah, you don't have to break out a wrench or anything, but just, yeah, as hard as you can get it with your hands. Good. So an out and then around on the other axis, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yep. It's like the little brain teaser puzzles where you assemble a cube out of like, you know, toothpicks. Perfect. Okay. Alright, now make sure you're not downwind because on a strong wind, it's going to be blowing that plume of flame in a direction instead of straight up. So, as long as you're not downwind, good to go. Spark it. Super easy, huh? Yeah. Alright, so once that's gone, um, kind of the next and final move is, imagine this is filled with nasty uh, beaver fever water with Giardia and E. coli and all sorts of stuff. Um, Beaver fever is the Canadian term for Montezuma's revenge, which is a term for waterborne fecal oral pathogen contamination. So you would use, this is basically a pair of pliers. And some people who use Leatherman's, we use the pliers of the Leatherman's to do the same thing. But this is a dedicated so-called pot gripper. And it's got a sort of custom shaped profile to grab onto the knurled or the rolled edge of the pot lid and securely hold it, even when it's full of water and stuff and kind of heavy. Uh, this is extremely soft aluminum. So if you're using a pot gripper instead of a pair of like tool hardened pliers, um, you just want to be aware that with the, like the gallon pot, that can be heavy enough to actually bend this and the whole thing just goes and dumps stuff onto the ground, which seems like a huge liability. You think they'd do better than that. But anyway, all right, so you'd fill this with water um, boil the water for a couple of minutes, make sure it's sterilized, throw your food in, let it soak, you have a nice hot dinner. Um, so, get the legs nice and even, end of their rotations, there we go. Alright, out, out, out. That's nice and flat and level, and stable. We'll put this on top, and if we let this heat without water in there, a, it'll warp the metal, but B, it will just put that hot spot, it'll get red hot right in that one little spot. And everywhere else is still kind of cold. Okay, so, grip, place, and then stick these nearby. Sound good? That's it. All right, so let's um, go ahead and turn that one off, Ellie. And of course, we would let it cool for a second because that's still nearly red hot metal. And then once that's done, we would just kind of reverse the whole process and pop it back in its container and good to go. Um, 
the temptation is not to have the extra stuff like the container, but these tips are sharp and they will poke through the edge of your pack, they'll poke through your food packaging. Um, and especially if you're, you know, you're walking all day long, 10, 15, 20 miles of backpacking, um, that inside your pack up against something is kind of rubbing and scraping and sawing at whatever it is. And uh, pretty quickly you can get some abraded and punctured stuff. So um, unfortunately, generally we're trying to minimize the amount of packaging for stuff for camping and backpacking, but this is one where it makes sense to do that. This on the other hand, we don't, need a separate bag for that because there are no sharp edges for it and there's no way to expose the valve until you actually screw the, the counterpart piece on okay so we'll just let that cool for a sec and uh let's pivot over to a whisper light style stove as kind of a, a car camping uh, analog to this it's a little bit more versatile you can simmer more easily you can cook stuff longer um one of these one liter fuel bottles will last a single person a week or more if you're very economical with it, um, backpacking and camping. And this is probably good for four, five, six days worth of cooking in the backcountry. Okay. And they do make bigger ones that are like two or three times as big, uh, but those are pretty perilous because they're tall. And if it's wobbly on uneven terrain, the whole thing can just fall over and spill on you. So I want to be careful with that. The bigger ones last. Uh, bigger ones last. A mighty long time. Um, I typically buy one every couple of years for summer camp and stuff like that. We're mostly using the whisper lights on summer camp um, because we're not generating a bunch of metal waste with empty canisters. We just keep refilling these over and over. Um, but yeah, I'll keep one of these as a back backup as the instructor. And I can't use a single one over 20 days of summer camp. Um, if we also have the other stoves, like it's it's a ton of fuel, so yeah. And they're very hard to puncture. I'm not aware of that ever actually happening. So some people are worried about that, but not so much. Okay, cool. On to the next one.